Okay, this once again, this is the press conference for Florida State University. We have head coach Leonard Hamilton. Uh, we will start with an opening statement from coach, and then after that, we will go to questions from the media. Media members, if you have a question for coach, please use the raise hand function, indicate you have the question. When you are called upon, please give your name and your affiliation. Please understand that coach cannot see you, so please give name and affiliation. But coach, if we can start with you with an opening statement. Uh, huge congratulations to the University of Michigan and Coach Jawan Howard. I thought they did an excellent job in their preparation and their execution. You know, many times when you watch teams, you know, on film, you, you feel like you have a pretty good idea of uh, their strengths and their weaknesses. And uh, many times this year, people have have looked at us in a similar fashion, and once they got on the court, our system sometimes uh, is not quite what people think that it is. And this is the case here. This team executed the ball, shoot, they executed so well, their spacing was was unbelievable. They were extremely patient. We had a hard time turning them over. Uh, they, uh, when they, they really, really played off of their big guy. We spent so much time trying to uh, defend uh, Hunter, and uh, they get to their perimeter shooters that the, when the clock would run down to four, with about 10 seconds left on the shot clock, they continued to keep staying in their in their system and they execute and made plays right there toward the end. That's what a good team will do. That, there's no doubt that uh, this team is, from an execution standpoint, from a decision staking standpoint, they are playing to who they are. Uh, I said prior to the game that the team that would win this game would be the team who was the best version of who they were. And I think they were the best version of Michigan tonight. And uh, even though I thought we could have played a little better I'm not real sure that uh, Michigan didn't have a lot to do with um, with our inability uh, to to play as well as, as we have had as we have played sometime during the course of the year. Uh, Tants off to the Smith. I mean, he's you can, it's hard to rattle. Uh, I, I, I thought that the two things that we thought would be the biggest challenge for us would be to uh, because we switched one through five is to keep the ball away from Hunter, and we worked our friends off, but. Uh, we never really seemed to uh, – that we worked so hard in trying to defend him and Smith. I thought it opened up opportunities for other guys to get those dive cuts. Hats off to an excellent team. And this team, if they play the way they played tonight, they're going to be hard to beat. All right, we'll take questions. Once again, please use the raise hand function if you have a question for Coach. We're going to start with uh, Kurt Weiler. I hope I got that last name right. Kurt, go ahead. Hey, Kurt Weiler with the Tallahassee Democrat. Coach, uh, it seemed like you defended at least well enough to give you a chance in the second half, and then they were seemed unstoppable in the in the, in the first half. And then the second half, they were pretty unstoppable, I guess. Was that an adjustment they made? Was that a lack of execution from the defense? Well, the first half, we, we both shot 30. We were 11 for 13, 33 from the floor, and they were 10 for 30. We both shot 33.3% from the floor. Uh, I think our Achilles was that uh, we were 0 for 7 uh, from, the, from the three, which is – you know, we, we had a couple of games in that we have shot the ball poorly and that we turned the ball over, uh, I think, 10 times in the first half and uh, they scored the 16 points off our turnovers. I mean, so uh, I thought that they they defended us and we defended them. We couldn't get to the free throw line and, and they got to the free throw line because we were overly aggressive. The second half, I thought that they did a much job, better job executing and got some higher percentage shots. And I, and I thought that the second half, we didn't get uh, we didn't we shot um, forty six percent the second half, which was not horrible, uh, but uh, obviously their execution uh, gave them a lot higher percentage shots than we did. Plus, uh, we shot uh, for the game. We, we I think we shot um, six free throws and they shot twenty three. They were much more aggressive in terms of executing, uh, getting the offensive rebounds and putbacks, and uh, driving to the basket and spacing the floor. I thought we, we fouled them a little too much, and we didn't get the same type of aggressiveness on our offensive end, and their lives are lost to a very good basketball team. Our next question will come from Mike Bianchi. Mike, go ahead. 
Yeah, Coach Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel. Obviously, um, you know, you made the run to the Sweet 16. How, what did you say to your team afterwards about finishing this very trying season and really a trying two-year stretch when you look at what happened at the end of last year and now this season with all the, the COVID? Well, I told them that you know, I knew how bad they felt after going out and losing to a very good team that played as well as Michigan did. But the, we, they can't let that one game define their season. You know, we were one game short from winning the regular season. We were one game short from winning the, the, the uh, conference tournament. And, and we came up short and we made through the six, six, Sweet 16 and, and uh, we got beat by a team that played better than us. In reality, we have a, you, you feel bad now because you didn't perform well enough against a, a real good basketball team. But we have a lot to be proud of. I mean, we, we've made tremendous progress with our program. And what we have to do is e evaluate, you know, where we are, eva look at our, evaluate our shortcomings, and let's go back now as a group and let's improve on these, on, the, on our shortcomings, and let's see can we come back and, and be a little bit better than the Sweet 16 uh, next year. Our next question will come from Austin Reynolds. Austin, go ahead. Hey, Coach. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is Austin Reynolds from the FSVU. Obviously, Raekwon Gray picked up the, the two early fouls in that game in the first half. Uh, was there any thought to putting him in, even for just a couple minutes towards the end of the first half? Because the offense seemed pretty much out of sorts without him. Well, um, you know, we normally have been okay. Uh, we were down, what, 10, 11 at halftime. That wasn't something that um, – uh, we were really, you know, we've come back from de uh, depth uh, being down like that. But uh, putting him back in for two two minutes to get a third foul, um, I'm not real sure that would have been the wise thing in relation to this particular team. Uh, we There are certain guys that we need on the floor. Uh, and there are certain guys that really make the difference in how well we play. And uh, Raquan has developed to be one of those guys that, Seem to sell us down when we need it. He's a very integral part of um, of of who, of who we are. Uh, but I'm not real sure him not playing a couple of minutes more in the first half would have made the difference in the game. Our next question uh, comes from Corey Clark. Corey, go ahead. Leonard, you talked about maybe your aggressiveness versus theirs. It did seem like MJ attacked the rim quite a bit. It wasn't like you were settling for jump shots. I guess not to put, get you in trouble commenting on the officiating, but what did they do <laughs> defensively to, to not get called for fouls that you guys did get called for fouls? Well, um, it's very unusual that a game of this magnitude and both teams being as aggressive as they were, but – Sometimes that's just uh, the way that the cookie crumbles. Um, we went to the foul line six times, and and uh, you got to give them credit, though. I thought their execution was really, really good. And uh, if I did underestimate one thing, the, you know, they were really big, strong, wide-body guys who really did a very good job of playing to themselves and within themselves. And they executed a lot better than we did, and they put themselves in positions where they could get fouled. You know, obviously I'm, I'm concerned about it, but not to the point where anything other than uh, sometimes that's just the way the game goes. I thought they were aggressive, and I thought we were too. Uh, uh, in the first half, the thing that I was most concerned about, I think we had about five point-blank layups that we just didn't finish. And we got the shots that we wanted, but we just didn't – even out the, the three-point shots that we got in the first half, I thought they were pretty good shots. Uh, this one of those nights where we just you know, couldn't seem to finish our basket uh, attempts at the basket, but you got to give them credit for being big and strong and contesting shots in there. And uh, I, I don't want to take away from uh, their defensive schemes that I thought caused us a little indecision and to be somewhat apprehensive and somewhat tentative when we went to the basket. And you guys who've seen us play all year know that we normally finish pretty well around the basket. We've been one of the better field goal percentage shooting teams in our, in our league and in the country. Our next question comes from John Romano. John, go ahead. Leonard, I know you said that you, you told the players not to let this one game define your season. I'm curious how you will look back on this season. Did this team get everything that it should out of its talents? 
Well, and sometimes I thought maybe we might have overachieved at times. You know, uh, we uh, we have some strengths and we have some weaknesses. And I've been very proud of this team that they they've hung together and and they've played within themselves. You know, every team goes through periods where they have issues, and we had a. You know, I'm proud of this, these guys to go through the entire season without having anyone uh, have a a COVID issue uh, to. Um, but and then, but even though we had two long pauses, you know, to be able to bounce back without a whole lot of practices and and um, uh, be able to come back and be somewhat efficient. Uh, the, the, um, most teams always have a few of those nagging injuries. Uh, we had <laughs> seemed like they all came in bunches, and uh, where we had maybe about a three, two or three week period where guys only played in games and didn't really practice. So I look back at the season. You know, I think that this team got a lot to be proud of, uh, and we'll 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 take this and we'll move forward. Uh, uh, I think that uh, we still got a, a a lot more areas where we can improve in, and hopefully you'll see that as we continue to keep moving our program forward. Our next question comes from Steve McGargy. I think it's McGargy. Go ahead, Steve. Good job on the pronunciation. This is Steve McGargy from the Associated Press. I was just wondering, the ACC is now out of the tournament. It's the first time in a while there's been no ACC teams in the final eight. I was just wondering, from your perspective, what do you think was the difference in the conference this year that maybe it wasn't, if you didn't think it was quite as good, strong as years past? I, I think every conference goes through those periods where you just, you can't stay on top forever. You know, and our, our team is one of the, um, most successful, rich, traditional conferences in the history of college basketball. And um, um, we made it to the Sweet 16, and we have some other teams emerging uh, that I think that uh, because of the rich tradition of some of our outstanding teams, they're kind of pulling some of us up and it kind of help accelerate our progress a little bit. And so I, I think there's a you, 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 what you're going to see is more teams end up being uh, at the highest level because of the success of the rich tradition of programs uh, that have have been the marquee teams for our for our conference over a number of years. Um, it, it, it works that way. It comes in rotations, and and I feel like maybe we had a year where this year uh, maybe we're not having someone in the elite eight, uh, but uh, I think most people would would. would most rational, reasonable thinking people that they know this is not going to be the issue moving forward. We're going to take one last question. We're going to take it from Zachary Braziller. Zach, go ahead. Um, Leonard, there's kind of been this narrative in the sport that it's, you know, uh, going to be a Gonzaga Baylor national championship game. Can Michigan beat those teams? <laughs> I mean, what you saw today? Well, I would say this if Michigan plays, as well as they played today in terms of their focus and their execution and their spacing and the, the, the way they were connected today. I mean, they were, they, they were almost flawless in uh, their execution. And uh, I, was, I mean, I was extremely impressed with how ready they were to play. They, didn't, they maintained their composure um, and, uh, from start to finish. They never deviated. And uh, they had that stretch there where I think we might have cut it to four or five there in the second half, but they they continued to, to keep executing. And um, there were about three or four possessions there where I thought we defended them by as well as they can be defended. And I thought we were having a, a good possession. And then, and then they would have a guy, one of our players would turn their head and they would make a dive cut and finish a, a basket there uh, after we had spent – a lot of energy defending them for part of the shot clock. So that's a team that really, really knows who they are. They know how to play to each other. And um, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't surprise me at all uh, for them to be standing there on, on, on Monday night with their finger up saying they're number one, number one. Coach, we appreciate you taking the time. Thanks very much. We will have senior MJ Walker in a few minutes. 
Once again, uh, when, when MJ shows up, 